Again, welcome to our shop and as usual I have found myself in another fine mess what we have here is a 68 or 69 Telecaster base that found its way to an antiques shop here in the area of course then the uh, owner when he found out that he couldn't sell it because it didn't work got a hold of me to see if we could figure out what to do about this and I'm telling you this is a mess looking at the condition of the base we've got this kind of stuff going on I mean rusty frets the strings have deteriorated probably some time ago looking at the condition of the base I figure the case met its demise maybe a decade ago but this is pretty rough shape we have one of the original bushings for the tuner missing does still have all the original tuners and now those are bent really bad so that's a good thing um, the pickup is bad uh, it's probably met its demise due to rusty pole pieces and corrosion the bobbin started to come apart and the coil has deteriorated I've seen this before where the pole pieces will start rusting and they'll actually eat the insulation on the wire for the pickup of course someone stuck the uh, tailpiece on backwards actually looks more like an air scoop off of a CUDA than a tailpiece for a fender base Hardware is really all corroded up. This base, I think, has been wet. Uh, preliminary check uh, revealed that the truss rod nut is stuck. I'm hoping it's probably just rusted together. Hopefully we can get that straightened up. It does have all the original electronics and stuff in it. Uh, we're going to try to salvage all that. His only hope, the base is in such bad condition and he's got so much money in it. His only hope for clearing on this is to keep it as original as possible. Which we, I forgot to mention, we've also got a few broken off screws in here. Every screw in this thing is rusted and stuck in the body. You can actually see where pieces of the pick guard is left, or the pick guard is actually just broken off of it. So we're going to try to straighten this out for him. Uh, as usual, I'm expected to wave my magic wand across this uh, with uh, Walmart convenience and economy and buy now timing. So we're going to see how that works out. <laughs> Frankly, I don't think it's working very well for him. But anyway, so I'm going to tear this down and get into it and see what we got going on. Like I said, I looked some of it over already just to give him an idea. Uh, but this is going to be ugly. But it's a shame. This has been a really nice base. Hopefully we can uh, salvage it. The plan here at this point is, uh, like I say, try to keep everything as original as possible. I'm going to pull this pickup out, possibly disassemble it, clean everything up, put it back together, and rewind it just to keep the original pickup in it. Yeah, it'd be easier for me to you know, get a Seymour Duncan and throw in it. But, uh, like I say, we're trying to keep the value up for this guy. Hopefully this is going to be worth the trouble. This gives you another indication of what we're going to have to be dealing with here. The screw here for the ground wire. Which actually probably covered the... Uh, hand rest cover here which is actually a shield also is rotted off the screws down in here for the pickup mounting are horrible 
I'm going to try to clean them up to I get a screwdriver in them, but man, it's not looking good. Also, something I mentioned here, the pots actually are dated 67, but there is a little grease pencil mark up here. It says 71 on the plate. So, plot thickens. Uh, we'll find out eventually what it actually is. I'll run the serial number, but uh, I'm not going to do that right now, but for the time being, I'm just going by the numbers I'm finding on the hardware. I've managed to get the pickup out. This screw right here was nasty. I had to file slots on the top of it to try to get a grip on it, heat it up, and then work it out, and had to use some rather unconventional tools to get it out of there, but got it. And I don't have to drill it out. Okay. On the other hand, the pickup does say 68. And you can see the rust and stuff here on the bottom. You can also see the top of the bobbins cracked in a few places. The big problem is the bottom that was deteriorated really bad. Now, I have saved all the little pieces here that I found in there. I was very careful to dig them out of all the rust and crud that was laying in the bottom of the body. But, I want to try to salvage this bobbin. Like I said, we've got the date on the bottom of it. It'd be really nice to keep this bobbin intact. It's going to be a bit of a chore. Here you can also see part of the problem here where these ends of the top of the bobbin is curled up. You see where it's lifted out of the magnet here. These are actually just fiber bobbins are pressed together and then dipped in lacquer. You can see the lacquer here around the edge to solidify it and insulate the magnets. Then they start winding on it. So, oh well. Let's carry on with this restoration or salvage or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I'm sure I'll have a new name for it before I'm done. Well, it doesn't look like I'm going to be reusing the string that it was wrapped in. Give you a better idea of what's going on here. Look at the corrosion here on this wire. You can't see it. Oh, there you can. See little hairs? That's where the coil is broken in several places, right there where it's corroded. Without having to rub my thumb across there, I'm sure we can fur up a whole bunch of them. Yep. Okay. Yay. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I guess I'm in for it here. Go figure. I'm going to clean this mess up and set this aside and carry on something else for the day. Uh, I've seen enough here for a while. Well, I thought I'd get you caught up here a little bit on the progress on our Telecaster base here. I have found a bushing from an original fender, so there we go. Found that with parts stashed. Nobody will notice that those are not exactly the same. It's even got a little bit of rust on it. Then we moved up here. Got our truss rod nut out. It was stuck. Had to do a little heating and a few things there to get it out. Got it loose, got it freed up, got the rod all cleaned up. Put a couple of washers in it, the spacers. It's flush back here at the back again. And in the meantime, we have fixed the crack that was right here. Uh, I don't know if you remember or not, but there was a crack right through here. So we've kind of patched it up. So we're going to move on to getting some of the screws out of the body. Then we'll clean up these frets later. We've had some really bad corrosion up in this area. I wonder if that's beer. Anyway, moving on. We're going to turn our attention now to getting this body cleaned up some. First thing we have to do is get all these rusty screws out. If some of them break off, well, we're going to have to fix that too. 
but the point is we want to try to keep from breaking as many as possible. So I'm going to be taking my time with this. Now we're going to clean out some of these heads. This one looks like it might be able to clean out and get a grip on it with the screwdriver. It's a couple like that. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. This is what we're going to be dealing with a lot of. This one is going to be an easy one. I cleaned the slot out and we'll get a screwdriver in it. Heated it up a little bit. Carefully worked it loose. And it is out of there. Now about 12 more to go. I'll be back. Well, we have all the pick guard screws out. It took about a half hour. <laughs> Had to be very gentle. Most of them come out with uh, conventional tools, which is how rusty and everything they are. They're nasty. The heads are pretty much shot on all of them. I had to clean them out with uh, an X-Acto knife and all that to where I could get in to get a hold of the heads with the screwdriver and then very gently work some of them out. Others, on the other hand, had to have more gorilla tactics used. <laughs> but I managed. No other screws were broken, so the only one I have to deal with to get out of here is this one right here. I'm going to have to drill it out and plug that hole. That's the only one, and that one was done before it came in the shop. So I feel very fortunate there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the bridge and electronics out of this and the strap buttons. Then I'm going to drill this screw out and plug it and get on to some cleanup work. There. Well, we're all disassembled. Man, this thing is nasty. A lot of stuff like this to deal with. Just to give you an idea, the amount of rust it was under the bridge. A couple of those screws actually uh, gave me a little concern. The one in the center was okay, but the one on the base side actually felt the screw itself twist as I was starting to take it out. I backed off and heated up some more and eased it out. I was afraid it was going to snap, but we lucked out. Say, I'm convinced this base has either been wet, there's a lot of cracks around here on stuff. It's either been wet <laughs> or it's been doused in beer several times. <laughs> Could go either way, you know. So, anyway, let's get this screw drilled out and uh, get on with it. All right, well, our screw has been drilled out, the hole has been plugged. And you can see here a little piece of wood we drilled out. It's got our screw in the end of it. Love that. It always works. Well, okay. It's been a few hours here. Thought I'd give you a little catch up here on what's going on. There's been some major cleaning going on here. I hand rubbed the body out, cleaned it all up got all the funk off it. Started cleaning hardware. Look at this bridge. Let's see if we can get a look at that. There we go. It's amazing what you can do with a wire brush and a little cleaner. And uh, I also enlisted a wire brush for my drill and did things like this. Remember the old rusty jack cup? Well, you know, it's not perfect, but it's not crusted with rust, and it's original. All the bridge saddle stuff cleaned up really well. Cleaned up all the screws for it. Everything there is actually working out pretty well. And the strap buttons cleaned up pretty well. So we're sticking things back together here. 
I've just put the bridge back on. I'm getting ready to clean the output jack up. It's pretty nasty yet. I'm going to get it cleaned up. Get the guitar wired back up. And see where we go from there. So we are gaining here. We have all the electronics back in. The pots have been cleaned. The jack is clean. We did have one major setback here. Unfortunately, I could not save the original pickup. The uh, flat work was just so deteriorated that every time I touched it, it just crumbled. So we opted for a reissue pickup. Like I said, the original plan was is to take the bobbin apart, clean up the magnets, straighten out the bobbin, put it all back together, and re-dip it in lacquer, then rewind the pickup. But uh, like I say, unfortunately, the cracks in the bobbin did not allow that. Like I say, every time I touched it, it just crumbled. So anyway, we had to do this. So we have the pick guard on. That was courtesy of WD Music. And like I say, the hardware here is looking pretty good. Do you have a little bit of you know, corrosion up here we couldn't fix? Like I say, the electronics is all working. We've got, like, again, we've got the original pots and jacks, so that's cool. So, I want to turn my attention to cleaning up the neck. If you remember, the frets on it were green, so we see what happens. So, I'm screwing the neck on here, and I've decided that uh, I need to give you a look at the back. You can see how bad the uh, checking cracks are here in the back. A bit of belt buckle wear there. I say quite a bit of checking back here. But we've got the neck on, and if we go up here, look how well the tuner's cleaned up. I had to take those apart and de-rust some of that and uh, lube them up and get them all going, but. Uh, they're functioning perfectly. And we flip it back over here and give you a look at what's going on here in the front. Remember the water damage we had up here. So that's as good as that gets. I did seal it up with some uh, clear lacquer. Tried to melt some of the lacquer back together you from chipping so badly but uh, spent a good bit of time just actually cleaning up these frets I thought it would come off a little bit easier but man it was bad especially this stuff up here was real bad it's got some fret wear but we're about ready to string this up I say found the missing bushing here so we've got all that again and that's original fender equipment too so what we're looking at here right now is we have a Telecaster base that's still pretty much all original the only thing that's been changed on this base at this point is the pick guard the pickup and a new set of strings that's going to be on it so that's kind of a win. Like I said, it's a little disappointing we couldn't, you know, salvage the pickup, but you know, you only allowed so many miracles, so you can't fix everything. You win some, you lose some. So they say. Anyway, so we'll be stringing this up shortly. We have a little bit of back bow in the neck that's concerning me a little bit. It's just a few thousandths with antitrust rod tension, so I'm hoping that it pulls out. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So next step, string it up. 
Well, well, well. We've got it strung up, adjusted the neck. Yes, our back bow did work out. Set the intonation, the bridge height, of course, the pickup height. Uh, went up here and had to recut the nut slots. They were all way too high. The bass actually plays great, although it does have some pretty good fret wear. But uh, we're done. Got almost six hours in this bass. There was a lot of cleaning. Actually, a huge amount of cleaning. Uh, a little bit of restoration work. Like I say, unfortunately, uh, we weren't able to salvage the original pickup, so. But we do have a base here. Uh, the year thing is a whole nother story. But we do have a base here that uh, pretty much everything is stock except for the pick guard, pickup, and strings. We were able to salvage everything else. Fully functional. Plays great, actually. Sounds pretty good. For you guys, I tried to do a demo with it, but man, it was so distorted through the camera, it just didn't make it, so it's not going to make the cut. So you're not going to get to see me play a bass. Anyway, getting back to the year thing, I actually ran the serial number, and a serial number tells us it was either a 1969 or a 1970. But now we've already talked about this. We had 67 pots, we had a 68 pickup. Unfortunately, the number on the heel of the neck was not legible. Uh, the sweat and gunk had uh, pretty much eaten it away. So we couldn't go by it. But I've said many, many times, uh, especially the Fender guitars and basses, you can have parts scattered over a three year period on one guitar. So in this case, we pretty much have pots from 67, a pickup from 68, and a neck and body from, you know, really who knows what, but the neck plate with the serial number on it says 69 to 70. So there you go. So, we have another base finished. So I'm going to wipe this off, let it set a couple days, check the neck again, and call the customer. I'm sure he's going to be thrilled. We put a bunch of new... Uh, that is one thing. Uh, the screws are all new except for the ones that control plate. So all the pick guard screws and the cover plate screws are new as well. Although the strap button screws, neck bolt screws, all that, everything else is original. So, saved as much as we could. So like I say, I'm going to let this settle a few days and give him a call and let him have it. And I'm sure he's uh, anxious to resell it. So, until next time, play nice. I'll see you later.